Hi there, welcome back to my channel. I'm Adeni Kebabalola and today I'll be giving you some tips to help you answer IELTS listening multiple choice and short answer questions. Now these two question types tend to be complicated in their own way and that's because um, they require you to concentrate a lot on what the speaker or speakers are saying. So it means that if you get lost at any point, you are likely to miss the answer. Another funny thing about these question types is the fact that many times you won't just hear one thing in the options. You, you would hear maybe two or three or even everything as far as your options are concerned. So what you want to do is find out how well you can pick your answers without getting confused. So I'm going to be sharing 10 tips, 10 valuable tips to help you answer multiple choice questions and short answer questions in the IELTS listening. Um, let me remind you quickly, if you're not subscribed to my channel, please try to do so now, so that as I publish or <laughs> upload new videos, you can actually get notified so you watch them. So the first tip I want to share is find out if you can get um, an idea of what you're gonna to listen to from the title of, you know, the title that comes before the questions. So it's like saying for multiple choice, Normally, you would add questions with A, B, C. Sometimes you could, it would even have a D. So the idea is before you begin to look at the questions, look at, just look under the um, instruction, just under the instruction. Can you see a title? I'm going to use um, an example. This is IELTS 12, 12 and um, I'm looking at test 8. Okay, I don't know if you can see it too clearly, but this is test 8. And I'm going to focus on these questions, 11, 12, 13, 14. So the four of them, you know, are here. But then you have this title, Visiting the Sheep Market Area. So it means that, you know, either somebody or some people are going to be visiting a particular area. Now, of course, areas would have people, places, and all of those things. So you want to, you know, begin to prepare your mind for the possibilities that, you know, um, you can have as answers or, you know, just whatever they're going to talk about. Okay, so the questions again, you can see there's a question and then you have ABC, another question all the way down. The four of them have the ABC option. This is what the multiple choice question looks like. Now, if you look at the options, well, you can see three words forming one option, three words here. This one is longer. You have like six, seven words. Many times when the options are longer, they seem to be a little more stretching and that's because, you know, if it were one word like um, football, um, basketball court, well, that's the word, <laughs> basketball or something that was just simple, maybe one or two words, you know, you would easily find the answer and pick it. But when the, answer, when the options are this long, it becomes a little complicating for people because you feel, how do I absorb all of this into my head and still prepare myself to pick the correct answer? Now, let me show you what the short answer question looks like. I'm going back to test seven. This one is from test eight. So I'm going back to test seven. And this one, this is what it looks like. I don't know if, oh, Lord, the light is not very good. <laughs> okay, but let me try to just do this. So this is what this looks like. You find that it says which two, the two is bolded and in uppercase, which two age groups are taking increasing numbers of holidays with BC travel and then you have A, B, C, D, E. You have the age range, you know, inside each of them. And that, that, that covers questions 11 and 12. Now for this one where you have questions 13 and 14, the question says, which two are the main reasons given for the popularity of activity holidays? And then you have A, B, C, D, E. So for this type, you're expected to pick two out of five. Now, it can be stressful because, excuse me, they're going to talk about, they're going to mention almost the five of them. And in other cases, they say some things that are irrelevant that you really don't need. So how do you get yourself to um, focus, you know, and make sure they are picking the correct answer? The first tip, tip number one for this, you know, kind of question, I think I already shared that for, my, for multiple choice, make sure you look at the, top, the title to see if there is a link between that title and what you're likely to hear. But this does not mean that every multiple choice question is gonna have the heading. 
they are, I've seen some like that where there's no title. <laughs> so if there's no title, what are you going to do? You can't stress yourself. Just check. If there's a title, then it might help you. It might guide you to, you know, what to expect. Now, the second one, read the question and paraphrase it in the simplest way possible so that you understand it. Okay, so the first question here, let's use that as an example. Which is the most rapidly growing group of residents in the sheep market area? Which is the most? Okay, which is the most rapidly growing group of residents in the sheep market area. So the question is asking, you know, you don't need to change which is the, you know, we are looking for a particular one. But something that strikes is most rapidly growing group of residents. So residents, of course, are people who live within a particular area. Now it's saying which, you know, group is the most rapidly growing. Okay, that's. When you look at most rapidly growing, it means the group that is growing at a high rate or that is growing fast. It's like saying what kind of people are becoming more in this area. So you're looking for those who have like the higher or highest population in that sense. That's what you want to find out as far as this question is concerned. So you're changing rapidly growing to fast increasing or like the group that is, you know, increasing or that has a higher number than other numbers. That's what you want to find out. Now, having read the question and paraphrased it to yourself, I can assure you that when the speakers begin to talk, you are likely to hear one or two words from the paraphrase you gave yourself. So the idea is, please do not expect the exact words in your question when the speakers begin to talk. IELTS is out to test your vocabulary. How many words do you know? How well can you use them? How can you replace words? Okay, so when you read a question, make sure you break it down to the simplest explanation possible so that when the speakers begin to talk, you can actually relate with what they're saying. Okay, that's number two. So number three says, as you listen to the options, know that, um, okay, they will mention some of the options and tell you why it doesn't answer the question. Now, what this means is you need to listen very well because what's going to happen is you have A, B, C. Let me give you the options. Option A says young professional people. Okay. Option B says students from the university. Option C says employees in the local market. So these are the three options. Now, the point is when the speakers begin to talk, what you would have is out of these three, of course, you need just one, but that doesn't mean they're not going to talk about the other two. Now, from those other two, as they begin to talk about them or as they mention them, they're going to talk about them in ways that do not answer the question. So when you hear the speaker talk about, for example, students from the university and they say something like, um, you know, students, um, how can I paraphrase this now? Um, students who attend the university here aren't so many, you know, something like that. So you find that aren't so many, you know, is like an opposite for rapidly growing group. Okay, the best way to do this is actually to listen to the, um, you know, the audio clip for it. And I think we're going to do that in another video. I just need to share this with you beforehand. So the idea is when they're talking about the options that are not your answer, they're going to talk about them in like a reverse manner. So the idea is make sure you are listening carefully to every single option. And how can you achieve this? That leads me to the next point. Okay, I think I already talked about this point that says do not expect the exact words that the speakers, you know, don't expect to, to hear them say the exact thing you can find on your paper. Now, the next thing is if you have read all the options before the speakers begin to talk, when they mention an option, you would know because you have read it. And the same rule that applies to the questions, you know, as far as paraphrasing is concerned, applies also to the options. So when you read the questions and paraphrase them, make sure you read the options and also paraphrase them. That would help you to see it in a different light. So this first one, A, that says young professional people. So you can expect um, young people who work in the corporate world or something like that, something that's similar to that. Then you have students from the university, you can have undergraduates or postgraduates, 
okay then employees in the local market you can say people who work in the local market so don't expect you know the exact words in the questions and then in the option okay now the next um tip i want to share some i think i'm already at number six because i've said i kind of um, you know talk about them in between now the next one is um okay i think i just talked about paraphrasing the options as well so that's number six now number seven when you hear the speakers mention an option listen carefully to find out if what they are talking about as an answer to the question or as something you should cancel from the options now what this means is because you are listening for a particular thing in this case you want to know those who have who have a rising number, a number that is increasing. So is it the young people who work in the corporate world or students, undergraduates in the university or people who work in the local market? You want to find out which of these. When you listen to an option and that's, you know, when the speakers talk about an option and that option is not your answer, please do yourself a favor. Just it's either you tick, you know, tick just the letter or you cancel the entire option out. I call it elimination. Now, the idea is if you have eliminated options that are not your answers, what do you have left? You know, fewer options to pick from. And before you know it, you pick your answer. Another thing is because you would hear all options, almost all the options, there's a likelihood that they might start with option B first. B might be your answer. And it might not be your answer so you need to just be ready there's there's really no alternative to this type of question you just have to listen to everything they say so if they start with b and b is not your answer it means that you should prepare yourself to hear a or c and then c can actually be your answer and then they will go back to a and still talk about a only to discredit it or to disqualify it from being your answer so what you want to do as much as possible is listen carefully. Eliminate as soon as you realize that the options that have been talked about are not what you need. Okay, so I've covered um, seven, one to seven. The number eight now is feel free to underline, tick or circle any word that can help you. Okay. Um, what this means now you know that i i made reference to most rapidly growing group of residents that's the number the group you know the people living in this area with a rising number okay so you can circle this part circle that part of, this, of the question so that that would keep ringing the fact that your pencil has made a mark on your question paper means that your eyes will keep going back there too you know try to make a connection between that thing and what the answer will be okay so if you want to tick somewhere you, you want to use the asterisk or you want to you know maybe use the the max sign or something whatever it is just make sure that you are maximizing your pencil on paper so that you can find your answers easily okay um another thing i want to emphasize is please don't just stand still and listen to the audio let your pencil follow what you can hear okay so as they say one word even if it is a synonym of the word you have on the paper let your pencil go there so that you are on the page i've had people who tell me i just keep wandering off i just keep losing attention i just keep losing focus i just get lost the best way to not get lost is to stay found and the best way to stay found is to have your pencil on the page so please make sure that you are involved when you are doing multiple choice questions or short answer questions. Okay, uh, I think this is nine now. <laughs> Pay attention to everything about a question before you consider picking it as your answer. That's as an, uh, you know, um, everything about an option before you pick it as your answer. So don't say because you get students Okay, don't say because you just heard that word students, you just go and pick option B or because you aired employees and then you just go and pick C. Make sure you listen to everything the speakers said around that option before you now pick it as your ideal answer. And then the final tip I want to share is pay attention to situations where the speaker 
you know, picks an option and makes that option, it is apparent that that option is an answer. But in this case, or in this particular situation of, you know, the conversation, they are discrediting or disqualifying that option from being an answer. So it's just like saying, um, this same question 11 now, you have young professional people. So they say something like, um, normally, normally the, the young people who work in the corporate world, um, you know, um, record the IS number or IS population in the environment, in the area actually. But then you find that this time around, things are a little different. So what you're trying to say in that, well, rough example, if I can use that is, even though normally young professionals are the ones who dominate that area, that's like normally, you know, this is what happens any day. But this time around, that's not the situation. So the idea is, that young professional people should be an answer or would have been an answer. But in the current situation, the speaker is choosing to eliminate it as one of your answers. So as much as possible, you see that everything, everything, all the tips are linked to, um, you know, one another. And I think the crowning tip is make sure you are listening carefully. Make sure you are listening carefully. Let me read quickly questions 12 to 14 so I can you know, talk about them as well. Question 12 says, the speaker recommends the side streets in the, in the sheep market for their dash. The speaker recommends the side streets in the sheep market for their dash. So it's like the person who is talking is recommending, like giving um, approval for certain things, okay? The, they're saying you should use you know, the side street, they are known for particular things. Now, the options, A says international restaurants, B says historical buildings, and then C says arts and crafts. So, you know, they're saying the side streets, if you want to go to the side streets, um, you know, if you want to get something, you should go to the side streets. Now, what is that thing? Is it, you know, international restaurants? And this would mean that, um, this would mean places that sell food from, food places that sell international dishes, you know, meals from other countries, other parts of the world. B is historical buildings, okay? If you want to see um, ancient buildings or places that, um, you know, have been built a very long time ago, something, you see, I'm trying to simplify the words so that it doesn't sound as technical and concise as what you have on the paper. And then C says, arts and crafts. So if you want to see fancy paintings, some nice artwork or some, some sculpture or something, you should go to the side street. That you should go, okay? Or I think you should go, or if I were you, I would go, you know? That shows you the speaker's um, preference or interest for that thing. So that's a way to pick your answer for number 12. Okay, let's look at that scene. Clothes designed by entrants for the young fashion competition must. Okay, clothes designed by entrants for the young fashion competition must. There's a word here, entrance. Honestly, I, I don't think I know what that word means. <laughs> but I'm just gonna, you know, think about it. And it's possible if, there, if it happens that you made a word and you're not so sure what it means, just try to read the full sentence and make sense of it. So it looks like there's a competition young fashion competition and it's saying that entrance let's just let me try to just use my basic you know what what that word can mean entries entrance like so to mean something like the people who are you know um who intend to participate in that competition i think we'll just check this for later in the dictionary okay but the idea is they're saying something about the clothes so it's like the case of if you're going to um participate in this competition the clothes you design must something so it's, it's like saying you should have a particular pattern a particular color a particular shape or should be made from certain materials or what can it be that's that's like what you do when you process the question now let me read you the options option a be modeled by the designers themselves so this means if i made the clothes i have to wear it you know and put it out for display b says be inspired by aspects of contemporary culture. It means that the cloth must have, you know, must reflect the recent style in, the recent, the recent fashion style rather, that's the recent trends in fashion or something like that. And then C says, 
be made from locally produced materials. So it's like saying um, we should use typical adire or or dantiki or something. I don't know. <laughs> what I'm just trying to do is I'm trying to simplify the question and the option so that when the speakers begin to talk, you can follow what they are saying. Yeah, the speaking is informal and natural. So the idea is, and I think this is still part two, so you're going to have just one person speaking, okay? Because this is question 11 to 14. So when the speaker is talking, you want to be able to follow what they are saying without feeling confused or getting confused, okay? So let's take 14 and wrap, we'll wrap it up there. 14 says, car parking is free in some car parks if you... something, something, something. Car parking is free in some car parks if you, so it's a case of, if you want to park your car, you can park it for free in particular places on some conditions or on a condition, who knows? Let's read the option. Option A says, stay for less than an hour. So it's saying, okay, if you just want to park your car for 25 minutes, don't worry, you won't pay any money, okay? I remember we went to the market last week and we had to pay 15 hour. I think we, we spent barely one hour in the market, but we had to pay that money for that parking space, of course, which was a parking space in the market. But in this situation, and they are saying, for A, if you're not going to spend up to an hour, you should, you know, you get free parking. That's option A. Option B says, buy something in the shops. Now, remember, we're talking about a sheep market area. So it's a case of if you buy something in one of the shops in this area, you would not pay to park your car. And then the third one says park in the evenings or at weekends. It means that if you park your car as from five or as from four or whatever time you want to choose to start your evening from, once you park, you know, in the evening, it's not afternoon, it's not morning, you're not going to pay any money. And if you if you park on weekends, Saturday and Sunday, you're not going to pay any money. But if you if you park, let's say on a Monday or a Wednesday, you should expect that it would not so this is how the multiple choice question works. I hope that everything I've shared has helped you so far. And of course, you can apply them as well to the um, short answer questions. In the case of the short answer questions, just make sure you understand exactly what the question is saying. Let me read the, the questions I read before. The previous one said, which two age groups are taking increasing numbers of holidays with BC travel? What you want to pay attention is okay so there are two there are age groups you know people of different ages now out of the five they've given us two of them you know tend to be placing more um requests to travel with the bc tra um, travel this is probably a tour company or agency or something now it says they are taking increasing numbers of holidays so the idea is BC travel is recording an increase in, you know, um, requests or something for holidays. Now, the idea is which groups are placing more requests? Which, is it, is it the teenage group or the major, middle-aged or the seniors? Okay, so the first group is 16 to 30. Next is 31 to 42. Then you have 43 to 54, 55 to 64, and then over 65. So the idea is a group well, two groups, because this question is interested in two answers, two groups um, I think seem to be recording the highest number as far as, you know, um, going on holidays with BC travel is concerned. So as you listen, remember that the speakers will talk about other groups, even the groups that are not your answers. Just make sure you listen well. And as you hear answers that are not related to what you're talking about, make sure you eliminate them. And of course, as you begin to narrow down, as you begin to eliminate two or three, you definitely find the answers that you need. Okay, so <laughs> it's quite odd here. Yeah? Um, but I think I, I've tried to explain what you need to answer um, the IELTS listening multiple choice questions and the um, short answer questions. I'll try to do um, a proper practice in another video. But for now, this is it. I wish you a wonderful time. Don't forget that if you want to take a, um, a mock test, you know, an IELTS mock test before your main exam, you can always visit takeielts.net. You'll find the link in my description box. And also, if you need to brush up your English and get better, if you want to speak better, 
you want to write better you want to have more vocabulary and you want your grammar to be big and solid yeah you should visit englishniger.com englishniger.com you also find the link in my description box once again my name is adenike Babalola. have a wonderful time bye, -bye.